Abby, all this was happening, but then you ended up in emergency surgery, right? Yes. I went to a spine surgeon that I had gone to beforehand because I had, a, he found a childhood injury that I mm -hmm. had since before puberty that I didn't even know I had. And so when this was going through my head and it was my back, my back, my back, I thought, you know what? I need to go see Dr. Malamed again. Maybe he'll have some answers. And I went to his office and he put me on the MRI machine and I couldn't lay down. I couldn't lay on the machine. I was screaming in pain, screaming. So then he sent me to have an MRI sedated. Dr. Melamed happens to be our good friend as well. And I'm hearing her story. And what I'm getting is that there was a lot of confusion in the medical community as to what was going on because her symptoms were driven by pain, but other things were going on. So talk to me about when she showed up at your clinic did you know what was going on or, or was it a mystery to you as well? So I knew something is not right, something is wrong. People were saying, oh, she's just trying to do it to get out of the halfway house. But I knew, no, 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 this is like a real, like a pain, something is seriously wrong. And I told her, I was like, look, we need to admit you to the hospital now. I said, you can't go home. We can, I said, I, we need to go to the hospital now. Something is not right. We gotta get this MRI. Cannot let you leave my site until we get this MRI done and we gotta get it with uh, you know, sedation. So while she's in the hospital, right in front of everybody's eyes in the hospital, she becomes paralyzed. And they call Dr. Melamed, who is put into a position of actually, you know, not to be dramatic, but great bravery, because here he's in the middle of the night, he's having to operate on someone because they're becoming paralyzed, and he doesn't really know what she has, so he can't plan the operation the way he normally does. He has to go in there and see what he finds. And So, uh, so severe pain, pain, pain. Right. And then paralysis? I was paralyzed from the neck down. I was in the fetal position with my hands like this. Yeah, in like 24 hours, like she went, you know, paralyzed. And then Abby, I remember you were saying, let's just go in, you know, let's do something. I said, like, Abby, I, I just I, can't go in. I need I to know could, what's going on. I, I need I proper imaging. I could overhear imaging. you saying to the anesthesiologist or somebody, I don't know whether to go in the front or the back. And I remember yelling as much as I could, the back, the back, it's my back, go in the back. And my three friends were there, and we were saying the Hail Marys and the Our Fathers, and the anesthesiologist came over, and uh, I said, just tell me I'm going to see you when I wake up. Just tell me I'm going to see you. And he said, I can't do that, ma'am. So what, what, what did the MRI show? Well, no, no, we couldn't we even get one. the MRI at the time. So we you, you were going MRI. in with no Blind. MRI. No, so what we did is that okay. I said, you know, and then when she got paralyzed, I was like, you know, we got to transfer her to get the MRI with sedation. They couldn't do it. So I said, let's get a CT myelogram right away. I called the radiology. I'm like, no, we need to do it like now. This is like an urgent. She's not going to make it till tomorrow morning. I said, she'll be dead by tomorrow morning. We don't have time here. So they ended up getting a CT myelogram. CT myelogram is a CAT scan where you put the dye inside the spinal cord, basically, and it lights up. So it's another way of seeing if you can't get the MRI. And it showed something is squeezing like basically like a chokehold on the spinal cord over 13 levels from her uh, bottom of her neck all the way to the lower part of her back. Wow. Like the spinal cord was like getting like strangulated like it, something and I thought it was an infection because she was having some fever. I'm like, this is an infection. We got to get in right away. So um, she had become paralyzed all of a sudden very quickly, went to the operating room and it was around like 12, 31 o'clock in the morning. You know, we took her in and then it started as soon as I opened it up, uh, we started doing the surgery, it was like, I'm like, this doesn't look infection, you know, this is not like pus coming out, it's just this semi-liquid, you know, like formation, you know, semi like hardened liquid formation that was wrapped around the spinal cord, was like squeezing, and we had to quickly move everything off the spinal cord, and I was like, it's not infection, I don't know what it is, but this is something very weird, and the pathology results, sure, came back as, you know, her Burkitt lymphoma. She would have made it till the next day. She would have, I mean, a few hours later would have been done.